We're joined now from New York by Matthew Van Dyke, a friend of Stephen Sotloff. And Mr. Van Dyke, thank you for speaking to us at this time. You have our commiserations. Uh, this is truly terrible news. Yes, it's, it's horrible. I've lost two friends in two weeks. Tell us a bit about uh, Mr. Sotloff uh, and his uh, work. Stephen was a brilliant journalist, uh, very hardworking, dedicated. He worked for Time magazine. Uh, he knew the dangers, but he knew that the story needed to be told, and he went. We had had dinner just in Washington, D.C., just a few weeks before he left for Syria. And uh, it came as a shock when I heard from Syrians that he, he was missing. There was, of course, this threat after the murder of James Foley that he would be next. Do you think anything more could have been done to try and save him? You know, I, it's hard to say if the rescue mission had been successful, perhaps if it hadn't been delayed the way that it reportedly was, uh, he would have been rescued. Um, other than that, I don't know if there were any ransom demands or not. Uh, I had hope when, when two weeks had gone by that perhaps there were negotiations going on, but, but unfortunately it doesn't appear that anything was done. You, you, you mentioned ransom demands. So you, you don't know of any in this case because there, clearly there was an attempt to extract a ransom for Mr. Foley. You don't know whether in this case that was uh, what was involved. No, I don't know. And in the case of James Foley, the ransom demand was, was so outrageous that it, it's not clear it was ever a serious offer. How do you feel this activity by ISIS militants is affecting American public opinion? You know, if anything, I hope it's a wake-up call to Americans that this is a serious threat. I mean, they're executing American citizens and videotaping it, and we need to do something about that. Uh, the administration better get serious about this problem. It's a problem that's been growing for, for well over a year now, and uh, these Americans have been missing a long time. We need to bring them home. There's more Americans who are being held by ISIS. And, you know, it's time to really get a policy together to address this problem and to get these people home no matter what it takes. What do you think the outlines of that policy should be? I would re-examine the policy of paying ransoms or prisoner exchanges to at least get these people home and then take on ISIS and kill them before they ever get to spend the money. You said earlier that uh, Stephen Stotloff knew the risks. It is extraordinary that freelancers such as him are prepared to put themselves in such danger. Yes, well, the only reason that we know that Syria is dangerous is because people like Stephen have been reporting on it for the public to know. And if those voices are silenced, we won't know what's going on in Syria. And the Assad regime and ISIS will have even more freedom to do whatever they want to the people there. So you, you would say to your colleagues, in spite of the risks, go on reporting in those areas? No, I, I want it. Uh, plenty of journalists, I'm not a journalist, I'm a filmmaker, but plenty of journalists and filmmakers have stopped going to Syria, and I don't blame them one bit. Um, the situation just become way too dangerous. Syria's turned into a black hole where people, Westerners, go there and they disappear forever. Um, I'd, I don't know if I'll be going back anytime soon. Um, if I do go back, it probably won't be for filmmaking. So, you know, I, I don't blame anybody who puts their own security first. What, what would be the other reason for going back if it wasn't filmmaking? Well, I'm also an activist involved in various other things, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. There was uh, some debate at the State Department today between the journalist and, and the spokesman as to whether America was in a state of war with ISIS, having lost, as you say, two friends in, in, in two weeks. Uh, what's your view on that? Well, I'm in a state of war with ISIS, that's for sure. Uh, if the administration wants to declare war or not, it doesn't matter. ISIS is clearly at war with us. They're executing our citizens, videotaping and putting it on the Internet. It's a behavior that the United States cannot tolerate. We wouldn't tolerate it if it was a criminal organization. ISIS is a criminal organization. It's time that we end them as quickly as possible. This is this has gone on long enough. How many more videos do we have to sit here and watch be released of citizens of our country being executed while we stand around like we, like we can do nothing about it? We're the most powerful country in the world. We need to support this moderate Syrian opposition to take the fight to them on the ground, and we need to expand the air campaign to bring it to them from the skies.